So welcome back everybody, Mike here. It's Friday evening and I just got home from work. That opening scene, by the way, with the three dogs, they're all our golden retrievers. There's Piper, Ruger, and Stanley. All three of them have totally different personalities, yet they all behave the exact same way when my wife comes home. They go crazy. Now we were actually gone for two days, but they act like that, you know, if she goes to the store. They're happy to see me, but they go nuts when when my wife comes home. I mean, you'd swear she was like deployed overseas for six months or something. But anyway, today's video is what has changed Pennsylvania deer hunting. All right, now where I'm standing right now is where I got my first buck when I was 12 years old, and that was a long time ago, uh, almost 38 years ago. And a lot has changed since then, uh, especially in the size of the bucks we have today compared to then. See, back then, I got a little, my first buck was a little, little seven point. We called it a rack buck though. Anything that had a few points was a rack buck. And we had no antler restrictions then. All we had, uh, well, a spike had to be at least three inches long. And there was a lot of guys, you know, pressing down on the fur. Eh, it's two and 15, 16, I think we got it. You know, and a lot of little bucks. Let me show you my first buck. This was my first buck uh, 38 years ago. A little seven point. Now, like I said, that was actually a decent buck back then. See, back then, it was nothing to see 50 or 60 deer the first day of deer season. I mean, they would just be in long trains running all day long. But the biggest difference was back then, there was a hunter on every hill in every valley. And I mean, the gunfire was unbelievable. It, it, it's like a scene from Saving Private Ryan when they're storming the beaches. And pretty much every buck was killed. Every year and a half old buck was killed before noon the first day and which is why they never got any bigger so we never moved either we you would you had your same spot you'd hunt every year and you'd sit there and you didn't have to move you'd see deer all day long and if you got up and moved all you do is push deer to the, someone else on the other hill or push them across the road or or whatever and plus it's pretty unsafe to move there were so many hunters i mean you just walk over this hill behind me there'd be two or three guys over there two or three in that valley over there and they're everywhere and it's not like that anymore so we continued for probably 10 years just to hunt on the ground and not move. Occasionally, you know, you get bored, you go for a little bit of walk, but that was what we were always taught. You have to stay put, don't move. It's the only way you're gonna have any success. And so we did that. And then it was probably the early 90s when we uh, first started using tree stands. And uh, I never used one before that. I might've been 18 or something, 19 years old, I don't know. And back then what we would do, we'd just get a bunch of two by fours and some nails and basically ruin a bunch of good trees by pounding spikes into them and then you'd hunt in those those tree stands and you'd sit there you know we didn't move around much but you'd sit there most of the day and uh you'd see a buck off maybe 150 yards and see some antlers you didn't know how big it was and you'd shoot it and then you'd go see how big it was some days you know some years you get a little bit bigger buck other years a little smaller but that's how we hunted but over time over time we started to see less and less deer each year and so guys i think some guys kind of lost interest and so you'd have less hunters in the woods and you know in the 80s it was like i say nothing to see 50 or 60 deer the first day in the 90s that might have dropped to 30 or 40. in the early 2000s it was probably you know 15 or 20 deer you would see in a day then in 2002 yeah, it was 2002, the Game Commission in Pennsylvania came up with antler restrictions. And I'm telling you what, you would have thought it was the end of the world. I didn't like it. I'll admit it back then, I hated it. I'm, uh, today, I don't really care either way. But, you know, trying to count points, I mean, these guys hunted a certain way their whole life. You see a bunch of deer come running by, you pick them with horns and you shoot. Well, that all changed with the antler restrictions. Now, you had to count points. And in our area back then, I think they had to have four points on one side. And it was nearly impossible to count points unless that deer is standing still at 30, 40 yards away, turn its head both ways until you could be sure. So a lot of people got frustrated, and especially some of the older guys back then, I think they just kind of quit hunting. So about 12, 15 years ago, you know, we still hunt out of tree stands and have since then. They're a lot nicer now. But we started moving around a little bit because there were less and less hunters in the woods. 
now if you sit you know all day the first day of deer season you'd be lucky to see 10 deer but that's not saying there aren't a whole bunch of deer here it's just we don't have the sheer volume of hunters out there pushing them around all day so you kind of have to go find them so we like to still hunt now you know we'll sit in a stand for a little bit or kind of leapfrog you know have one guy in a stand and another guy get out and you know take a little stroll and you just kind of bump deer back and forth but it's nothing like it was back in the day i mean nowadays you, you can bump a deer out it'll run over to the next valley and then just start feeding over there they're just so much less hunting pressure now, like i said i can only speak for my area here but it's completely different than it was 35 38 years ago so back then a lot of guys didn't uh didn't archery hunt uh, gun season was the biggest season of the year now today you definitely have more archery hunters and then they legalize crossbows in Pennsylvania so you even have more archery hunters and I do both and I really enjoy archery hunting I enjoy just being in the woods to tell you the truth it doesn't matter what season it is or what I'm doing but I just like being in the woods but archery season today you know it's they got six weeks and you have uh, the rut that you can hunt in Last year on, on one Saturday, I saw six buck in one day and, uh, you know, four or five pretty nice ones. And when I was a kid, that would have been unheard of. It, is, it never would have happened. So nowadays, we have a lot better quality buck. They're a lot bigger. And the Game Commission, they like to say it's because of their antler restriction. And I can agree with that somewhat. But I think the biggest reason is we just don't have the number of hunters that we used to have. And, you know, back then, every year and a half old buck in gun season when I was a kid, at least 85% of them were killed by noon. Of course they're not going to get big. You never got a two and a half, three and a half, four and a half year old buck. It just didn't happen. They were all killed. So the Game Commission thinks that this antler restriction thing is, you know, oh, it created all these bigger bucks. I don't think that's the sole reason. I just think it's a lot less hunter in the woods and a lot less pressure. So the little bit older bucks, the smarter bucks, they're not getting pushed out of every spot. And uh, the season is so stretched out now. I mean, you've got six weeks of archery season, a couple weeks of gun season, you got muzzleloader, and you have less hunters spread out over all that time is a lot less pressure in the woods at any given time. Back then, we never, there was nobody had food plots. I mean, now people, I've got food plots, my neighbors have food plots. Matter of fact, I'll go show you a couple. I was a kid nobody ever dreamed of food plots I mean it's just something no one ever did you wouldn't consider spending all that time and energy and money on doing that for the deer that's something else that we do a lot different than we used to and some guys they hate it you know oh it's not real hunting hunting over a food plot I say if it gives you a reason to be out in the woods more and working on the land and doing things there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot worse things you could be doing I enjoy it this is something else we never did years ago. We never had deer feeders. One, I couldn't afford it. And two, just many, most guys didn't feed deer back then. I don't really know of anybody that did. Here in Pennsylvania, you can feed in the winter time and in the spring, not during hunting season. And I think you have to stop feeding like 30 days prior. I usually stop middle of August. There's plenty of food for them this time of year anyway. I enjoy it though. I enjoy feeding the deer, the food plots, the scouting, the setting up the tree stands the whole thing I love the whole process about it so 
do me a favor in the comments below if you hunt Pennsylvania please let me know if you think I'm spot on with my assessment I'm gonna give you a review here in a second or let me know if, um, if you think I'm way off base like I said I can only speak for what I have witnessed over the last 35 38 years here hunting the same area so here's the way I think it, it went down how things have changed in the 80s, it would be nothing to see 50 or 60 deer in a day. But every buck you saw was these tiny little basket racks and spikes. Reason being is all those hunters, we had more hunters then, and they were mostly all in the woods during one two-week period, mostly in the first two days. And it really gave the deer no chance to hide, to, to live to be a bigger buck, you know, to live to a two and a half or three and a half or four and a half year old buck. There's just too many guys in the woods. And so then, that was in the 80s. In the 90s, we kind of started seeing a little bit less deer. And everyone blamed it on all the doe tags. And I, you know, I can agree with that in some areas. They, they allocate too many doe tags. But I think as the pre hunting pressure is reduced, you know, it gives the deer a chance to kind of spread out a little bit and not be pushed all day and get shot. So in the 90s, you'd see less deer. And, but we started hunting in tree stands and things like that. In the early 2000s, you might only see 15 or 20 deer in a day. And some guys were still hunting the same way they did 15, 20 years before that. Sit in one spot all day. They're not seeing deer. The deer were there, but you kind of had to go find them. And so then the antler restriction kicked in, and a lot of guys just flipped out. I mean, it was like the end of the world. You know, how are you supposed to count points? And it is difficult. But what that did it gave another opportunity for more deer to, to get away to survive to the next year not so much because of the size of them it's just impossible to count the points and then you had more guys quit hunting and during that time period more people started archery hunting because it was less pressure less people in the woods and it spread the whole season out so instead of having you know a million people in the woods in a two-week period shooting every deer now you've got this extended season with archery, rifle season, muzzleloader, you know, these special youth days, senior days. I can't even keep up with it all, but it's all spread out. So the deer are more in their natural state, which they're pretty elusive, and it gives them a better chance to survive. But I'll show you some pictures here from this trail camera. And these aren't monster bucks. For around here, they're very good, though. And compared to 35 years ago, it's like night and day difference. Some of the pictures that I'm sure I have on this camera, I'll know when I get up to the house. I mean, if I were to see a buck like this when I was a kid, I probably would have freaking passed out. I mean, they're, they're that nice compared to what we were used to. So, you know, I appreciate you watching. And uh, please comment below and share these videos if you like. If this is your first time at this channel, uh, I'll have a lot of hunting stuff this fall. My channel is pretty much all kind of country, rural living tractor stuff, jeep stuff, food plots, projects on the property, ponds, just everything outdoors basically. So once again, thanks for watching. Take care.